So this is in uh, like a Tiger Mendoza. Um, I figured out a way to control uh, the katana, um, uh, the, the tone bank, the different presets, uh, using MIDI over USB from Ableton Live. And uh, I shared it in, in Reddit, I think, see, to see if anybody else is interested in finding how I did it. So uh, here is a very quick video, uh, a very rough depth video. Um, maybe somebody could take this technique and make a better video at some point, who knows. Um, so anyway, this is the video, I hope you find it useful. Um, I'm not the best at making these videos, but like I say, I hope you find it useful. Apologies in advance for the audio quality, this is all going through my laptop mic, because it's the only way I could find to do recording. Um, okay, so... Uh, it's one of these things that it's not that difficult to do, it's just not particularly well explained how the MIDI inputs and outputs work in um, the container, uh, especially over USB, um, in, the, in the manual that comes with the amp. Um, so through a bit of trial and error I found out how to do it, and, um, and yeah, hopefully you guys find it useful. So, um, I, the first thing you want to do when setting this up um, is so I've got Ableton Live, uh, this is 10 suite, it doesn't really matter, um, pretty much any copy of Ableton will work. Uh, that with Any copy of Ableton with MIDI out will work, I'll explain more about that in a bit. Um, I have the Boss Tone Studio installed, and uh, you can see I have, uh, underneath there somewhere in the video, I have a camera pointed at the um, panel on the amp so you'll be able to see when the thing when the presets are changing uh, as I'm triggering the the um, clips in, in Ableton. Anyway, I'll get on to that in a bit more. So first thing you'll need to do in uh, the Tone Studio software um, is go oh, oh I should mention well the, the amp is connected to my computer. This is a Windows 10 laptop over USB, it's just a standard USB cable, um, USB 2.0, uh, the Katana itself doesn't actually have a MIDI, uh, I've got the Katana 100 Mark II, um, Mark 12, sorry, a 2x12, oh, you get what I'm trying to say, like I said, not great at making these videos, um, but it's, yeah, the, I think the head and the, some of the other versions have a specific MIDI input the version I've got doesn't. So this is all done over, over USB, but still uses MIDI. Uh, anyway, back to the Tone Studio settings. So uh, to set up the amp for inputs, you want to go into System. You want to go to... Uh, so you'll see here if I go to MIDI settings. Now, so this is pretty pretty key. So. So I've set this to channel 14, to MIDI channel 14, um, and you'll see this becomes more important when I get into the clips, but the way it works is, uh, if I just show you this really quickly, so down here, the main, if you use Ableton, it may not be a set, uh, an area you use a lot, but the different, um, the different tone settings in the amp are controlled by this combination of bank, sub, and program. Um, and each, so the amp can have technically, well, eight presets, technically nine, so eight of the presets plus one for the panel setting. Um, and you change each one of those with this bottom one here. And back in Tone Studio, how you, uh, you it made the numbering may be different, but uh, what you want to do in the program map is uh, change this so it goes one through eight here. So for channel A in the, on the amp, um, you've got one to four, and then for the presets in channel B, I've got five to seven, and then nine is for the um, panel. So the panel is where you can you know create your own presets on the fly, and it's just everything. It's just on the panel. So that's that. Um, and then in control change. So this will allow you to change the um, 
basically switch the different effects on and off. So if you think about it like being able to switch uh, your stomp boxes or whatever on and off, um, this, this allows you to change that. So within, I've only set a few of these up really because it's the only ones I've used, but so I've got this CC number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. It will make a bit more sense in Ableton when I go into that in a bit, but just if you set this up for now, then it should become a bit clearer in a sec when I show you how I use this. Okay, so close that and just we'll leave that aside for a second. So that sets up the uh, Tone Studio now in Ableton itself to be able to do the MIDI output. I'm going to go to Options, go to Preferences, and you want to go to MIDI. Now I've got a whole bunch of different MIDI things in here, don't worry too much about them. But what you'll need to do is set the MIDI out, I've got it here. So in MIDI output, this line here is the important one. And what you want is that output and on the Katana DAW control. This is key, not that one, not this one. The DAW control and switch all three of those on. Okay? Leave the other ones off. This one's used by the tone bank itself to send the different messages across. This one, I have no idea what it's for. But this is the one that actually controls the MIDI outputs um, or allows you to output MIDI from Ableton straight to the amp. Okay? Again, all plugged in through USB. So that's key. So we'll shut that down. Um, you'll notice I'm not actually using the audio, so you can obviously, well I say obviously, you can use um, the Katana amp to record audio directly from the amp as well, well over the USB interface like an external sound card. I'm not using that here, I'm just using um, Ableton to control the different, the changes in the, the tones on the amp building, on the amp itself. So this isn't about audio, uh, so this is, uh, yeah, being able to change settings as I go. The audio uh, can come out and line out on the amp itself, uh, it can go through the rack out, it can go just through the cab speaker. So this, um, and then it, once you've got it through line, line out or mic'd up the cab itself, then your front of house guy or, or just, you know, in the room, that's where your audio will come out. Okay, so, um, I have... So as I kind of started to explain, the way that um, the main thing I've been able to do here is, is change the different um, change the to, to, to the different uh, the different tone settings on the amp by triggering a clip, which is pretty handy. And I'll explain why. If you don't get why that will be handy, I'll go into some examples in a bit. Uh, oh, so before I do that, so I've set up a channel in Ableton, which is a MIDI channel, and you'll see here there are no effects or no instruments on this at all. Uh, but on the MIDI 2, you want to change that to your Katana uh, DAW control um, that we've just set up in the options. If I go back here again, okay, so that's that there, and that's that there. Okay, and then our channel 14, if I go back to Tone Bank, so this, if I go to System, this is where your RX channel comes in, so that needs to match that. So if you change this to 13 or something, then you need to change that to the corresponding output as well. Okay, but I'm going to leave it at 14 for now because that's how my setup works. Okay, hopefully, 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 hopefully everybody is still following. Uh, okay, so if I try and do a side by side, so I've got OBS doing my recording well, just bear with me. Um, okay, so, so yeah, like I say, the way that the channels work, so this is, uh, sorry, programs, the, the way that the channel changes work is by changing the different programs in the clips. So, and that's all done here. So, you'll see here on basic lead. I'll just move this to the side a little bit more so you can see it. So, this kind of, I've got to just named them so it mostly kind of matches the first five here. So, if I just 
click on here and then just scroll down the clips you should be able to see program 2, program 3, program 4 and then program 5 which corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here okay so if I then just click launch this clip you'll see it you'll actually see in the tone bank in the software itself that the settings start changing so do they correspond to that preset and if I do the same with sweet blues just in case you think I'm lying that goes to that one you see some of the that was not such a big as change but I'll do big lead that changes it does take a little while for the um, amp to update especially when you've got a ton of effects on your preset so just bear that in mind if you know hopping around them pretty quickly um, and then one more just a couple more so this goes to number four there and hopefully you see in the video there uh, and the actual video on the amp it's changing the lights and the amp and the channel LEDs are changing there as well just in case you don't believe me it's not so that the amp is actually talking back to the tone bank software but it's actually the amp itself that's changing it's not so Ableton doesn't stop talk to the tone software anyway you get what I'm trying to say um, and then we go over to channel B so this is B and you'll see there I am now on wall of delay which is pretty cool okay so that's pretty useful um, you can then take that a step further uh, if you want to by going to so as I said each of these so these buttons here basically the buttons are to switch to different individual effects your boost your mod your effects etc etc they can all be switched on and off in the clips as well using um, using MIDI Ooh, sorry so the way you do that so I've actually got it doesn't look like it here but the way I should do that if I show you here so the um, if I go back to system just show you this and I go back to control change you'll see that CC number one I've set to be this the booster um, the booster switch on and off Number two there is the mod switch, effect switch, etc. etc. Okay. So try and show this on the software. Oops. Sorry, I keep minimizing because I'm dragging around. So if I just launch this clip again, doesn't do much. If I launch the one below it, the booster is now on. And you can see here, so this blue light blue colour here I've got is uh, the MIDI CC number one identified here. Um, set to 127. So basically, anything over I think about 60, we'll leave that 64, counts as a one, and therefore switches the booster off, the uh, booster on. And anything less than a one, so if I launch this clip, it turns the booster off, but still within the same preset. Okay. Uh, so because I'm still, you see here, I'm still on program five. So booster on. Booster up. Uh, and you'll see if I can do uh, the boost plus mod using the same principle. Oh, that didn't quite work. Uh, anyway, same deal. <laughs> I obviously haven't had a chance to set that up yet. Um, but you get what I'm trying to say. So if we go to boost no mod, or, or no boost there, or turn it off. So that's all within the same preset. Within, so you can really mix and match. You can switch on program 4 you can have a, a clip which switches on program 4 but say you want to leave the booster off initially and then switch it on later you can do all that within a clip by different MIDI assignments uh, in here um, let's have a look so that's that's pretty much the, the, the sides of it so you may be wondering um, why would I want to do this what what is the use of doing this well for me um, it means I can control so rather than using foot switches or stomp boxes and stuff I can still play my guitar still use the amp and all the great effects that come with the amp and it is you know the, the effects I, I really love in this amp and the whole usability of it um, but I can now sync up my effects 
uh, or different types of effects to different points in my set when I'm playing a set with, with Ableton Live. So just a really basic thing here, so we'll just press start and stop the clip. So if I start this drum beat, um, you guys probably can't hear that, but there is a drum loop playing. Um, now what I can do, if I launch this whole scene, so at the moment there's no, um, there's no MIDI clip, there's no uh, amp clip there. But if I launch this scene, it will launch uh, on the beat, so I've got my quantization step to one bar there. So if I want it to come in, you know, for a second beat like on the bar, I launch that one, and it launches. And the preset will change accordingly as well. And you've just seen the software, I can do it again with this one, hit. And the presets change accordingly. Again, you've got to bear in mind that it, there is a bit of a delay, so um, it takes a little while for the amp to update, but it's still pretty handy. So if you plan it well enough, you can have a clip to change to say a lead or a rhythm setting or some crazy delay, and then have another clip that switches it all back and makes a very clean sound. Whatever you you want to do with this stuff, basically, you can do. Um, one thing I haven't found out whether or not you can do yet, and maybe somebody, like I say, when they kind of pick this up and run with it, can tell me if it's possible, is to actually modulate or change any of these. Uh, switches so you can turn stuff on and off but you can't necessarily increase the booster uh, value or any of the settings within the VFX um, at least not that I've found so far please do have a play with this let me know if you can get it to work um, so let me just stop that there. cool okay well that's pretty much the size of it I hope you found it useful um, it's so I'm planning on using it in my sets uh, so so and again the audio here will go through uh, the audio is going to come out of the amp so the audio here this is nothing to do with the audio from the amp itself uh, or from the guitar this is about being able to control the panel and uh, via MIDI so um, so yeah the audio uh, would come out and line out through the record out or the headphone jack from the amp uh, it can come out of the speaker itself whatever this just changes which preset you're going to um, and that's that that is that and um, thanks very much for watching um, like I say apologies for the slightly rambly nature of the video I don't do that many of these um, but yeah let me know what you think below let me know if you use this um, and any suggestions or tips then uh, yeah leave them in the comments I look forward to seeing what you do alright thanks a lot bye